I would like to welcome you to today's presentation where we will be analyzing different approaches to reduce clinical supply wastage. We will start with looking at historic data to establish a benchmark. Then we will review the situation at site and the key role IRT plays to optimize site drug supply and minimize wastage. We will then look at the reasons for clinical supplies remaining unused at depots and what we can do better to manage depot stocks. My name is Stefan Dürr and I will be your presenter today. I have worked in IRT industry for 17 plus years, starting at Fisher Clinical Services, then Senduit from its inception to its integration into IQVIA, and I've been with IQVIA for over a year. I've held multiple roles in project management, and I have spent the last three years managing key customer accounts and building up the drug supply center of excellence. In my role leading the drug supply COE, we are focused on investing in technology, expertise, and data analytics to find better approaches on how to set up drug supply in IRT, how to optimize drug supply strategies for reducing risk and cost, and how to automate changes based on real-time data. We've been regularly analyzing completed studies to check how much of the drug produced for a study has been used at the end of the study. As clinical trials take a long time, the data from such analysis lags the decisions taken in the supply chain planning by many years. For the current analysis, we have used a different approach that allows us to analyze studies already while they are running. We looked across 500 studies we have running on our IoT platform or have completed recently and analyzed how much drug was used based on the expiry date of the drug. Like this, we get more close to real-time data in regards to drug wastage as we do not have to wait until study completion to analyze the data. As you can see in the middle table, we have on average 45% of the drug that expired in the past five years that was assigned to a patient in the study, and 55% that was not used and will be wasted at the end of the study um, accordingly. The numbers are fairly consistent if you look at each individual year, the 55% wastage corresponds to an uh, overage um, of about 121%. We did an extensive analysis um, five years ago where the average usage of drug at study end was 38%. So the trend is certainly going in the right direction. However, having more than 50% of drug unused at the end of the study still leaves room for significant improvement. Of course, every study is different, and having 50% of drug used in one study might be the most optimal scenario that could have been achieved, whereas in another study, it should have been possible to reduce the overall supply needed uh, and only, only have 10 or 20% drug remain unused at the end of the trial. So we did this analysis to better understand the reasons for drug wastage so that we can focus on the right solutions. One of the aspects to assess when looking at unused kits is where are they in the supply chain once they expire? In our analysis, we had 38% of the kits remaining at site unused at the end. That's a bit more than one third. 18% were at the local depot, meaning that they were at least shipped once from one depot to another. And 44%, so almost half of the kits, were still at the central depot and did not actually play an active role in the study. Reducing overage in a study by reducing wastage at site or depot level can add risk of not having enough supply in the study. Having a stock out that impacts patient recruitment or patient safety obviously is the worst case scenario that needs to be avoided at almost all costs. So it is important to identify ways we can reduce overage without increasing risk of stock outs. So let's first examine the reasons and solution for clinical supply wastage at sites. When looking at site stocks, we, distin we distinguish between buffer stocks, that is the minimum stocks that we keep at sites for unpredictable dispensing like randomization, dose changes, kit replacement, and the stock that we need at sites for forecasted patient visits where we know more exactly what will be needed and when. 
So we distinguish between offer stock and forecasted stock. One way to reduce buffer stock needs at the site is to cover more of the stock needs through better forecasting. So the better your forecasting is, the less uncertainty we have in regards to um, dispensing at site, which allows us to reduce the buffer stocks that is there for uncertain dispensing only. I'll show you on the next slide one of the tools that we introduced to get away from the static buffer stock levels uh, and concept and rely on automated updates of buffer stock levels by using real-time data in our team. Also, we need to ensure that the sites that do not need specific drug types do not get replacement shipments when the drug expires at the site. We've also added a feature for early replacement of buffer stocks that will reduce shipments, but also help to reduce wastage at site. When we look at the stock that we send to sites based on forecasting, based on the patient needs, we need to ensure that it is as accurate as possible and meets the study design and dispensing assumptions. So for example, we need to ensure that we do not over forecast for unlikely events. Um, so if, for example, we have um, those, those changes in a, in a study that we do not forecast that every patient will change to any possible dose at any possible visit, but we forecast based on the most likely path and cover the unlikely path um, through, through the buffer stocks. Otherwise, we will create oversupply at the site through the forecasting, and that will lead to more wastage then as well. Also important um, is that we have the right expiry date um, sent for each patient for each visit so that we ensure that whatever we send to the patient for the forecasted visit is the right expiry date that they can then use when the patient comes for that visit. Otherwise, we'll be sending stock that has an incorrect expiry date or not long enough expiry date for a specific visit, and that will then lead to, to further wastage at the site. And then, if we can, let's say, move um, some of the reduce the buffer stocks at the site, um, we can invest some of those savings from the buffer stock into increasing the duration of the, of the forecasting and send drug for, for longer periods of time. Through that, we in the end um, do not change the site stock of the sites, but we reduce the number of shipments and we reduce the wastage uh, as well. To reduce the buffer stock needs at site, we have developed a tool called Dynamic Optimal Buffer Stock. In a static buffer stock strategy, which is a standard approach in the industry, we define a site as low, medium, or high recruiter and assign a buffer stock strategy um, to each of those um, recruitment levels. With our tool, we define many more supply strategies and assign them to optimal buffer levels. And then the system checks on a daily basis whether a site needs to be updated to a different supply strategy based on real-time patient and site data. In the graph on the right, you can see how each of the 12 sites is assigned to the supply strategy that best fits their current buffer stock needs, which results in a lower average buffer stock across all the sites than if you would um, manage that through a static buffer stock um, strategy. By using the dynamic optimal buffer stock tool, we can achieve a reduction in stockout situations because we can have higher buffer stock strategies for very high recruiting sites, a reduction in drug wastage at sites because we reduce the average buffer stocks at site, a reduction in the number of shipments because we can invest that reduction in shipping for longer periods, and a reduction in manual oversight work. So there's no need for the clinical team to keep on changing sites from low medium to higher recruiting um, based on changes during the study. Now, what does that look like in some real examples? Here we present two case studies where we recently implemented dynamic optimal buffer stock on an ongoing study. You can see that both studies are large in the number of sites and patients, um, and we implemented dynamic optimal buffer stock in the middle of recruitment phase. The results are are, are very significant. So um, in the first case study, you can see that we reduced the buffer stocks by 57%. Uh, 
Um, at the same time, we reduced site shipments by 21%. And we achieved that by doing about 150 supply strategy changes per month. And in that study, we used about 80 different supply strategies that we changed the sites uh, between based on, uh, based on the data of the patients and of the sites accordingly in that study. Um, this was possible by, by implementing also um, uh, a site strategy that basically removes all buffer stocks from a site when they don't have any patients and only adds buffer stocks back to the site when they start recruiting uh, again. In case study two, we also had a reduction of buffer stocks by 27%. Um, so a little bit less reduction than in the first case study. But in this study, we focused more on reducing site shipments. So we had a reduction of 27% in buffer stocks, but the significant reduction of 64% in site shipments. That we achieved with about 50 supply strategy changes and, you know, really able to, to, um, to reduce the, you know, both of the stock needs and the shipments at the same time. And also, you know, obviously no manual work involved anymore to change the site strategies, you know, from, from a site if it stops recruitment or if it restarts recruitment uh, accordingly. Now we'll look at the situation at the depot. So how do we reduce waste at, at depots? From our perspective, it really needs to be the right combination of expertise and technology. What are some of the challenges and solutions um, to those um, wastage problems at the depots? Overall, it's much harder to manage the stock at the central depot because the decisions on how much drug to package and release at a depot are taken a lot earlier um, in the study for those, uh, for those releases at the central depot, of course. Um, once you have it available in the central depot, you send it to the local depot and you do that more closely to when recruitment starts or, while re or after recruitment is already ongoing. The more data you have available, um, the, the less uncertainty you have. And obviously that reduces the overall risk of, uh, of sending too much. At the central depot, the wastage is quite often a result of supply planning. The supply plan is done to cover worst case scenarios, for example, or is overly um, conservative. Um, improved supply planning that is based on the study design, the recruitment plan, and the IRT capabilities is key here. One size approaches um, will not work when you plan your supply strategy. Um, for a specific study. So you can't say that we always plan 100% overage per study because every study is very unique in the way that the drug is used. And in one study, 10% overage is too much. And in another study, 200% overage of a specific drug you know, might be too little to do the study in a safe way. So based on the design and the usage, you really have to tailor the, st the study and use good tools to do those calculations. The better your recruitment planning and the better the alignment between the clinical supply teams and systems is, the easier it is to get an accurate estimate on drug needs and the more accurate your estimates, the lower your wastage will be. What we see quite often is that the expiry date, which obviously has a big impact on long studies that have multiple expiry date events, um, has a huge impact on your overage. Each expiry date event will lead to more wastage. In a study where you have a thousand kits packaged that expired at the end of the year, and then once you know patient recruitment starts and only 500 kits are used overall in the study until the end of that year, obviously you will have a wastage of 500 kits no matter what you do. So. The key is to ensure that your drug can be used up at the depot and at the site well before it expires. Then, of course, anything that helps um, to make the drug use more flexibly in the study, um, you know, can help to reduce overage. So, obviously, global booklets, 
can be just-in-time packaging or labeling, pooling across studies, things like that can help keep your stocks more flexible and through that increase the chance of usage. Then very important is that you reassess your manufacturing packaging campaigns and adjust the quantity and timing of those based on the latest study progress. When we look at the local depots, um, some of the same recommendations um, apply. Important there is to not overcommit buffer stocks to depots upfront. So that first shipment where you have the highest uncertainty, um, don't make that shipment too large. The longer the study runs, the more data you have available about recruitment in those local depots, the easier it will be to actually supply them with the right, right amount of stock. That will lead to less wastage. If you have, if you, um, if you can use the RT data and the most updated recruitment plans to assess your depot stock needs on a regular basis, and I'll show you a tool that we have on the, on the next slide, that can help you to, to have a quick and easy way to assess how much drug is needed and when you need to supply that, that next uh, depot shipment. And obviously you have to take into account the, the timelines it takes to ship to the depots and cal calculate those buffer stock needs for unexpected recruitment um, and expiry date planning. So one solution that we have released is our forecasting dashboard where for every depot, you can see the current depot stocks of all of your drugs in the study, and then the forecast of these depot stocks in the future, based on all of the patients that you have in IRT at the time, based on your latest recruitment plan data that you can input into the tool, and based on drug expiry dates. So you can see here, for example, that we have an expiry date event in April, May, that reduces the stock here for the lower two lines to zero and below. Then also take into account the IRT supply algorithm. So it's important that your forecast, you know, is in line with what your IRT does in terms of shipping algorithms and everything. So it's, so it's you know, one of the benefits of having this tool within the IRT system is that it is fully in line with the IRT um, algorithms. And it's updated on a daily basis, so it gives you a tool to do a very simple risk assessment where you are with your depot stocks and allows to plan your, your next depot shipments in an easy and correct way. Our ultimate goal is that drug supply technology in IRT allows to do full supply planning. Linking recruitment planning and supply planning provide key supply indicators and assess supply chain risks at depot and sites in real time. IQVIA has the right expertise and technology to help our customers plan their drug supply in a way that reduces the need for drug wastage. So in conclusion, why is drug supply optimization uh, important? The costs of clinical supplies are increasing. More and more often, we have expensive compared drugs that need to be used for studies. We have cold chain that we need to maintain there's pressure to reduce costs and wastage. But also protocols are getting more complex, so that requires new solutions to optimize and optimally manage the drug supply chain and ensure that patients get the right drug at the right time in the right place. Here's some additional um, case study data where you can see that our technology can help you in achieving success. For example, we had a study that had a very difficult um, study design where it was difficult to predict what patients will come back when and what kind of drug they will use. So we were able to implement an improved forecasting algorithm and using dynamic optimal buffer stock to reduce site stockout situations by 88%. You've seen case studies where we can reduce shipments quite significantly. We had another one where we reduced shipments by even 75% on a large program that achieved savings of over $3 million for the customer. We have now um, in implemented functionality where we can reduce replacement shipments from expiry date by 100% um, through the use of dynamic optimal buffer stock and early replacement um, 
logic. And then on studies where we have expensive comparative costs, we have we can use dynamic open buffer stock and and also forecasting algorithms to really minimize the, the drug wastage and reduce uh, reduce the cost for those comparators significantly uh, in studies. So with that, I would like to thank you for attending and please do not hesitate to reach out to me for further discussions on this topic.